Hi there, my name is Sandra and you're watching The Schwoven's Nest. My first project is using this wood round that's about 22 inches wide, I believe, maybe 20. Anyway, I'm going to take some Mod Podge and put it over the top half of the wood round. And I'm using some of these new fabrics that I picked up from the Dollar Tree, and I think they're absolutely adorable. They're all bee themed, so I thought I would put two of them together and make a beautiful sign out of them. I ironed this ahead of time to make sure there weren't any creases and I just placed it down where I thought it would look nice, basically right in the center of the fabric, just pressing it down with my hands and then I'll cut around the excess. Make sure when you're cutting fabric that you have a good pair of fabric scissors. They're going to be extra sharp and they're really going to cut through the fabric nicely. Regular scissors will probably pull and tear your fabric. I'm going to repeat this process for the bottom half of the wood round, but this time I'm going to use this coordinating buffalo check or gingham pattern, which was also from the Dollar Tree. To hide the line where both of the fabrics meet, I'm using these thin bamboo sticks that I got from Amazon a couple of years ago already. If I can find the link, I will put it down in the description box. I painted three of them black and I'm going to start with the center piece and then add one on the top and one on the bottom. I have this bead wood cut out from my X-Tool laser machine that burns pieces out of wood and I'm going to be covering it with some Mod Podge because I'm going to be using some markers on this and I don't want the colors to bleed. While I wait for the Mod Podge to dry on the bee, I'm going to make myself a messy bow just using some different coordinating ribbons and some strips of the fabric that I used as well. I like to use markers to color in my little wood pieces. I just think it goes a lot faster. For the bee's wings, I'm just going to be drawing some veins into them and leaving them the natural color of the wood. And how I did this was just take three lines out towards the edges of the wings, one at the top, one in the center, and then one at the bottom. And then I just added some smaller squiggly lines to those I also cut out the word welcome and I'm using a gold marker to fill this in. I didn't have a yellow one at this time, so I just thought, you know what, the gold is pretty similar, so it's not very shiny and I thought I'll just use what I have. If you're interested in any of my wood cutouts, I have them all listed on my Etsy shop. Now it's time to assemble everything. I'm going to be using the black three pieces of wood as my base for my wood pieces. I'm going to glue the B on here and then the welcome all the way across, just like it's sitting there. I'm going to add some greenery and yellow daisies and lavender down at the bottom. And I'll also add just a little bit at the top. For the hanger, I'm going to be using some nautical rope. I like to tie it in a knot and then glue it on either side of the sign. I'll also use my staple gun just to staple it in and make sure that it's really secure for hanging because these wood rounds are quite heavy. I love how this one turned out and I hope you love it too. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you decided to click on my video. If you like what you see so far, I'd love it if you could click that red button and subscribe to my channel. This is a 24 inch massive tray. I love how big it is and I think I'm going to use it as an ottoman tray. What I've done is made sure that all of my Jenga blocks fit. These are the original Jenga blocks with the numbers on the sides, but you won't see that once you've got it glued in. I'm just using hot glue and I'm going to just place them all together end to end, making sure that they don't stick out past the round underneath. I did have to trim one a little bit 
not by much. I just use a tiny little hacksaw that I have to do that and it worked out perfectly. I'll just continue adding the hot glue and putting them in place all the way around and this one is finished. I'm actually loving the way it looks. Just the natural wood color because the wood round itself and the Jenga blocks are the perfect match. So here's my wood round and I've got it painted white, just solid white uh, front back sides. And I'm going to take some Mod Podge and use that to apply the paper. This isn't tissue paper that I printed on. I just printed on regular computer paper and that will give it a little bit of a thicker substance so the Mod Podge won't make it too wrinkly. The lemon clip art graphics are from Creative Fabrica and I will have the link to these down in my description box. I put these together using Google Drawing and I won't be able to use this as a free printable for you because they are purchased images. I'm going to paint the outside of the round where the paper isn't this pretty butter yellow color. This is just an acrylic paint that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I had no yellows in my stash, so I decided to go grab some and I love this color. It's not too bright. It's a little softer than your regular yellow. So I'm just going to go all the way around. I wanted to create a checkered pattern on this as well, so I'm just using one of the makeup sponges from the Dollar Tree, dunking it in some white paint, and then doing the checkers just on the yellow portion all the way around. Once I had this complete, I thought that some of the white space needed a little bit of some color too, so I went in with my paintbrush and created some squares on the paper so it looked like it blended right in with the rest of the sign. When I got close to one of the images, I just used that as my border and then it made the white and yellow checks look like they were the background of the image. And some of my squares didn't line up properly, but once it's completely finished, you don't even notice it. To make the sign look more old and vintage, I'm just using a chip brush and a little bit of light gray paint and I'm just going over it to add a little bit more texture. This also kind of dulls down the white and the yellow a little bit. It is a little bright, but I just really love the old fashioned look of this. I'm going to use some acrylic letter stamps to write out old fashioned and I'm just making sure that everything is going to be positioned in the same way because I'm going to use my acrylic block to pick them up and I apologize for my huge noggin head in the way here. To use an acrylic block all you do is press down on the letters and they'll pick up really well right onto the block and then I'm going to use some black ink to stamp them down. Now did anybody catch the mistake I made? But I will be able to fix it. If you did, comment below and let me know what it was. Here's a much better look at the mistake I made. Do you see it? I left the H out and put the I first, but this is an easy fix simply because the H has the same initial shape as the I. So I'll have to go ahead and fix this up. So here I'm putting the H on the first area of where the I is, and then I'm going to just add the rest of the letters and then pick them up with my acrylic block one more time, ink it up, and then stamp them down. I'll do the same thing with lemonade down at the bottom. My last wood round project for you today is using two of these from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to just use some wood filler to fill up the holes. Once that's dry, on the first one I'm going to use the same butter yellow that I used for my last project, but I'm only going to paint half of the wood round. 
For the second one, I'm going to use green and I'm going to do the same thing, just paint half of it. I'm also going to do the sides of these wood rounds and the back. Once I got to the green one, I remembered what I wanted to do with it and I only went in about a half an inch with the green, just on half of it. Using Mod Podge on the top half of the green one, I cut out a little piece of decorative paper in the green. You can see it sitting there and I'll use Mod Podge to apply it. Once it's dry, I'm going to use an emery board or a sander just to take off the excess paper. For the yellow one, I'm going to be using this fun flat paper and I'll just trace it out with my pencil, cut it out, and then again use Mod Podge to apply it to the one half of the yellow round. Right now, I like using a really rough emery board to just sand down these smaller pieces. My sanding block is a little too big. I will be investing eventually in a, one of those little finger sanders. I think those are really neat and they would be really handy for all of these small projects. Can you guess what I'm doing with this green round? I'm making this into a watermelon slice. So what I've done now is just added a little bit of the green. And while the green is wet, I'm going to go take the same paintbrush and go into the white, make that little white blended area that you see on watermelon. And once I have that, I'll add some really bright reddish pink. Blending the colors isn't hard to do as long as you make sure you're working with wet paint or damp paint rather than dry paint. So I'm just going to continue blending in there and now I'll add the bright red pink color for the center. Once the pink is dry, I just took my black oil marker, you could use any marker, and added some seeds. Using my Cricut, I cut out a design with black vinyl, one for each of the wood rounds. For this one, I put Sweet Summertime, and the half is sort of like a sun shape, kind of. I just wanted it to be a little fun, a little play on the sun. So I'm just going to very gently pull this off and then this sign is complete. I'll do the same thing for the yellow one. Both of these designs will be available as free printables on my website and you can find that link down in my description box. These slides turned out so cute. I really love both of them and I can't wait to style them in my home for summer. I hope you enjoyed my wood round projects today. You don't have to use these real thick ones. There are plenty out there that you can find at Walmart and at dollar stores to make these signs as well. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That gets me noticed more on YouTube and helps my channel grow. If you like this video, here's a couple more that you might be interested in. Take care and I'll see you soon.